Hi everyone, so the final patch notes and the season start announcement have just dropped in this blog post. The link is in the description. It is the 26th of August at 5 p.m. in the different time zones. So that was already the expected date for a while already. And now it's been confirmed. So next Friday we go and blast. Now there's a lot of changes in these patch notes here that uh, yeah, just shake up a few things here from the PTR to the live server. And I want to go and unpack them for you. Also, here are the cosmetic rewards for the season if you are interested. So here's a pretty cool portal frame, I believe. I really like that one. And also a very um, Elden Ring inspired pet, I guess, or so. Um, yeah, also the kind of, kind of hilarious. So if you want to grab those from the season journey. Hedix Gift, I've already covered all the setups in a dedicated video. You can go check that out if you want to be prepared. We have the Raymond, UE, Waste, Tarasha, Roland, Helltooth and Rafma. So Demon Hunter is the clear winner there. Barb is also pretty good. And I guess Tarasha is actually going to end up pretty solid. Now let's get into the actual changes for the final patch notes. First one is they have doubled the drop rate for the Angelic Crucibles. So this doesn't really mean much to most people because it was kind of hard to gauge the, the drop rates. But we know that it was dropping roughly two and a half times as much as Ramadni's gifts. So now we can expect them five times as much. So that is actually a pretty solid amount. So I think when you're like doing typical like two, three minute speed farming now on like GR90 plus, you can expect somewhere in the range of like three to eight crucible drops per hour. So that is a really big amount considering that there's only three different powers to get. And it's mostly like a, you know optimization feature later on to try to get like really good rolls on an item because the, you use it on an item, it rolls one of the three powers and it makes it basically primal. So you can very easily get like a really good weapon, a really good like a ring that has an affix or like an offhand that has an affix and it will maximize all the stats. So this is really good news. It will make it very easy to get whatever you want. Most of these class specific powers didn't change in the final patch notes. So I will cover them in a separate video and like go through all of them and the mechanics so they can be prepared for the season. I'm not going to talk about every single one now. I'm just going to talk about the changes. So here we have the Blast Hammer in red, but I don't think that this is actually changed. This seems like exactly the same as before, so I'm not really sure. But this one is actually quite interesting for the Crusader Fist of the Heavens. So it says now after casting Steed Charge, this effect occurs more rapidly for five seconds, which is exactly the duration you're going to have on Steed Charge most of the time with the uh, set. And uh, it sounds sounds kind of cool now for like a speed farming build for also T16 in particular. Fist of the Heavens is a really nice build for Crusaders. And depending on how rapidly this occurs, this could make Fist of the Heavens rather solid. So if this is like, you know, two, three times per second or so, then this is actually quite a good amount of extra hits. And you can probably move up like five to 10 tiers or so with this build. It's not going to be like ridiculous with those numbers, but this is just like some example. We have to see for the actual live release how good it is, but it will definitely make for a really cool speed farming build. I really like Fist of the Heavens. It's one of my favorite farming builds in the game, actually. And since there's this Arcan buff, uh, yeah, this might, this might be a really good build to farm with. Here's also a change to the Archangels. The first one was already on the PTR, so nothing really changed there. But here they have heavily nerfed the Angels. And that was kind of necessary to make them not able to clear GR150 on their own. So the way this would have looked right now, Norfar has actually made a full setup for the six different leaderboards on a Crusader, one for every single set, using only the Angel Power. And those would have been the strongest builds basically in the game. Because you don't need any gear, you just go in with the Angels and clear 150. So now it's heavily nerfed to 33% of the previous value. I guess this is a typo here. And yeah, 33% is going to be pretty rough. So there might still be a very tiny chance that with like an insane run, you might be able to do it. But with 33%, it will be hard for sure. Like the boss fight alone is going to be like yeah, very long. You need like an insane rift that it can clear in like five minutes. And then you're going to like hammer away on the boss for a long time or you try to kill the boss like yourself with Stricken or so on some of those builds. But yeah, Crusaders has rather weak builds. So I don't really expect the Angels to be really useful anymore. And especially with their power being reduced so much, they're also not going to be included in, you know, 
any other build that is not purely angel focused now. So it's just trash basically. So we'll see if someone manages to do and, and, and pull it off with uh, like a full angel setup. But I, I think it's very unlikely at least. Team Hunter seems to have no changes, so it's going to be really strong. Monk has some slight changes to Wave of Light and the Wave of the 100 Fists. So Wave of Light was slightly nerfed to 5 bells maximum. This used to be 7. So you go down maybe a tier or so. It's still going to be by far the best pushing build. It's just super powerful. It's probably going to clear like solo 150 day 3 maximum or so. So this is how good it is. Uh, there's also potentially some bugs that might be exploitable that there's no mention here that they were fixed because no one really knows how it works. But sometimes you deal way more damage than you should on top of all of that. So this just makes the build really good. Anyway, there is a slight nerf to um, the potential Z monk setup. So we were theorizing a, Z a support monk that would use his bell power because it was able to spawn Oculus rings on bosses, for example. You could have given Archon stacks to wizards because they counted as kills. So that was changed, but doesn't really have an impact on like meta setups. So yeah, in general, Wave of Light is a bit weaker, but insanely powerful either way. Then there's the Wave of the 100 Fist power. That is actually kind of interesting. So they gave it effectively a 700% damage buff now. So previously, this power was so weak that you didn't actually use it even on a generator build. And yeah, it was it was like slightly behind, basically. So let's assume it's like minus one tier, and then you get 700% bonus. So that is probably something like a 11, 12 tier buff. Yeah, Raymond is still gonna suck really badly, especially considering that uh, this exists. But at least it might make it a bit easier to get started in the season with your Raymond set. Uh, you can use this power. I guess it's gonna have some duration or so, so that you don't actually drop this all the time. So you can actually like punch your way through. One other problem that Raymond has, it's Omega Squishy. And going higher tiers doesn't really help here. So yeah, have fun with that. Necromancer didn't really get any changes. Same for the Witch Doctor. I was kind of hoping for some last minute buff to some of the Witch Doctor powers just to be like even better because Witch Doctor, despite having like some of the coolest powers and some of the strongest powers, is, is just not meta enough really. So I think this Horrify could have been 200%. I think even this pet power could have been 200%. And yeah, the, this one was kind of cool already. But yeah, it would have, would have been nice to just get like a bit more juice here. But either way, especially Mundunugu with this uh, Boga Dial power is really fun. He has like the Gargantuan build that he can play. The Horrify thing does help a bit on most other builds. So Witch Doctors in general are going to have a pretty good season, but unfortunately not group viable. And finally, the Wizard also all the powers unchanged, but they did change the Tarasha. Here's a pretty big update to the Guardian set. So previously, this bonus was the two-piece bonus, which to me was very surprising because we have Crimsons and we have all guilds, and in both cases, you would never dream of using any of those sets with just a two-piece bonus. And on the Guardian set, it was actually so that the strong bonus was on a two-piece, and you didn't really care at all about the three-piece, which was this one previously. So this led to some kind of weird setups, including the Shadow Impale Demon Hunter that I've already made a guide about that I have to change now. So Basically, this is just a yeah, kind of like a mirrored uh, set to all guilds almost. So you want to have the Ring of Royal Grandeur, you want to have the three piece bonus if you want to make this work at all. It does have the Bracer, which basically every all guild setup uses, and then you have the helm or the belt. And uh, on the all guilds, you have like the helm or the chest or the shoulder. So it's kind of the same slots. And for most builds, it will be just like a low Paragon versus a high Paragon choice now. You won't have these weird setups that just go for two-piece Guardians and ignore the three-piece bonus and don't have Ring of Fire Grange anymore. This idea is completely dead now because the two-piece is worthless, basically. So I will actually have to redo a lot of planners here because I've already prepared everything for Season 27 for all the classes. And I'm going to go over them later on stream and uh, going to try to fix some of them up. But Basically, Guardian set is going to be a choice now that yeah, it's pretty straightforward. If your build can run all guilds, your build can run Guardian set, basically. I think this is like a general rule that will apply. And a second general rule will be that it will be useful up until somewhere like 2k, maybe up to 3k Paragon. 
and that will be somewhere a point where you will want to swap two augurs. So this is how this will go in most cases, I guess. So Guardian said technically a bit nerfed for some builds because you need to have the previous bonus now, but it is more simplified. It's like a way easier to grasp choice. You don't have to think about, okay, can I actually make some setup with just the two-piece bonus and stuff like that. So most of the builds will be untouched and it's just gonna run Guardians on lower end. So this is how that goes. Akan's got a slight buff here. So here we see at the end the Phalanx damage affixes and Enforcer gem now benefit the Phalanx staters. Uh, so this was actually the case in the first iteration on the PTR and then came the update and they lost that ability and now they gain it back. But in the second update also, they gained the ability to use Condemn damage, which didn't work in the first version. So now it's a bit unclear if we can use Condemn damage on, um, on some pieces like the shoulder and the chest. So those are rolls there and this would help the build a little bit, I guess. Or if we can just use um, like the phalanx affixes and the passive and like the helm, for example, and uh, then you can have this setup. So maybe you can combine the two. We we'll have to see on the live server, but I guess we can hesitantly say that at least with the phalanx changes here, it will be a bit better. It will not really be a super strong build. So overall, yeah, I think that this phalanx condensator is going to be somewhere like a decent build, even like eight here, I guess. Uh, with this change, it's going to go up a few tiers again, and it's going to be pretty solid, but it's not going to be like, you know, the ultimate build. It's going to be like, not going to be like meta or anything. And finally, here are the wizard changes. So first of all, they updated the Zerus Magnum Opus. So for whatever reason, they put like Meteor on this, on the PDR, I think even on the six piece bonus. So people were playing some weird Tarasha two piece DMO six piece combo. I didn't even try that because it was pretty trash and they just removed Meteor again. Other than that, they have kept all the other updates to the Zeris. So you have the auto bubbles, you have the damage reduction, so everything is there. DMO overall is just like, yeah, a bit more mobile, a bit more tanky, a bit better. It's not nothing crazy, but somewhere like the mid-range builds. And um, they updated the crowd to Primus though, to remove point of no return. So previously it gave you all runes and now it doesn't give you this one. And that is actually a very good change, I believe. So this allows you to actually like, you know, play the game with Crown of the Primus. So Pound of No Return, if you don't know, gives you a five second stun when enemies enter the slow time. And the problem was that, yeah, it just ruined pulling, basically. Like you couldn't pull enemies together. You couldn't really use this item. And now you get like a bunch of really nice effects with like extra attack speed, extra damage, extra damage reduction, extra slow. So Crown of the Primus is a pretty solid choice overall without this rune now. So this might be included in some of the DMO setups at least. And finally comes a Tarasha change that is actually quite interesting. So we have the Mempo of Twilight that is actually not marked red for some reason. And it says Meteor Shower Rune is applied to all casted Meteors and deals 400% extra damage. I suppose the 400% extra damage applies to all Meteors, not just the casted ones, because else you would have basically only visual clutter from the two-piece bonus it's already going in that direction because it seems this Meteor Shower Rune will only work for self-cast Meteors. It's specifically self-casted. So I don't think that the triggered Meteors will have that. Otherwise you would have insane amounts of screen clutter, like 50 Meteors every single second or even hundreds. So it, it could get really crazy. And I believe this will only apply to self-cast to kind of like keep it, you know, on a bearable level. Now this 400% damage buff is pretty nice. That's around 10 tiers or so. Plus you get Meteor Shower. So what this means is that the Death Wish setups and the Archon setups are both dead now. And as far as I'm aware, this was the original intent of changing Tarasha. So I was expecting some change that would kill Death Wish and Archon. And I guess here we are. And we have yeah, a pretty powerful Tarasha set now. Uh, it's it's probably like overall a buff of something like 15 tiers or so from what we have seen on the PTR. I've played such a Meteor Shower self-cast version on the PTR already, as you can see here. I was just spamming the Meteor skill and then everything else was automated, proccing the other Meteors and uh, yeah, just giving me extra damage. And now I guess they would not run Meteor Shower anymore, but instead most likely the Cold Rune. And the Cold Rune, first of all, does like around two and a half times damage of the Meteor Shower impacts. So the impacts are just going to be bigger. And it also has a ground effect that does a bit of damage. 
So that is also quite helpful and I'm not sure if this can stack. So yeah, overall, you're going to do quite a bit more damage from that. And it's going to change around the Meteor self-cast rune to cold and then the familiar from cold to fire to get all the elements. So this is kind of the setup that I imagine here right now. And overall, I expect that this would be uh, like a 15 tier buff to Tarasha, which is going to make it fairly solid. So you have to imagine this would be like 137 right now, for example. And you see how I'm actually annihilating this 122. So if you go forward, um, yeah, I clear this in like nine minutes or something. Um, it's just like a, some random rift. And the boss damage is really good on this build, so it's not that crazy to go higher and, you know, not gonna get like hard stuck on the Rift Guardian because they have pretty good single target. So it might actually end up like a pretty solid build now. We have to do the exact math, but I also expect it's gonna land at least somewhere in A tier or so with those changes. The funny part about this is theoretically can even lose some kind of Meteor Shower plus Star Pact combo. But I think this is just going to be like all over the place. You know, the Star Pact is really relying on doing this one, you know, very targeted nuke impact in one place when you have everything stacked up and air damage and stuff like that. So I don't really expect that to work very well. Theoretically, you could also try to do like a very heavy cooldown based version and go with Molten Impact because Molten Impact is yet another times two and a half or so damage of, uh, for example, the cold rune, and uh, well, it's just even more damage. So as long as you can cast that often enough, you might actually deal even more damage with such a setup, but it would be extremely cooldown hungry to make that work. And lastly, here's one final change where they fixed the bug where slow time and Archon slow time stacked. So this just slightly nerves Veers, I guess by like a tier or something like that. Not really a huge deal, but kind of unnecessary to nerf this at this point, I guess. VS is not exactly like a good build anyway. And yeah, this is maybe, this is like a foreshadowing of some update to the build or so in the future. And, you know, we don't really have to play like these clunky, no teleport versions anymore that are super squishy outside of Archon. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. But I guess, yeah, slight little like one tier nerf or so for VS there. And this is it for the patch notes. So overall, looking quite exciting. I'm really looking forward to the season. I have to do some updates now for some of the planners, as I mentioned, and I'm gonna be doing this like in the next one or two days. The maximal updates are coming very soon as well, so you can expect them probably end of the week or so, or maybe start of next week. So definitely in time for the season launch. So get ready. I'm gonna be making more daily videos talking about all the different builds. I'm gonna make all the guides. I also have some leveling practice uh, runs already done and more planned that I will be uploading for all of the classes so that you guys can be best prepared for the season. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are about the different um, topics here, about the changes. Uh, maybe there's some things I missed now or some you know setup that I didn't think about, especially for the Guardian set or Tarasha. So let me know if you have anything. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more D3 content. And I'll see you guys next time.